Cause the ads don't work They just make it worse So I know I'll leave this platform again What's up, kids? How are you doing today? I'm, I, I was so as I was going through my day, you know, as you do, as we are as people when we're within life. Already spent way too long introducing the episode there. I was being served my usual plethora of nonsense on Twitter, I believe it was, because Twitter is, you know, the dumpster fire which it has become and gradually will become more. At the time I'm saying this, the whole blue check mark thing hasn't been introduced, which, if you're unaware, is basically making people pay for verification, but also openly admitting that the algorithm is going to be pushed more towards people with verification, so you're paying for views. Essentially, they've turned Twitter into OnlyFans, and people are just okay with that, because they love Elon Musk, apparently. I mean, the people who aren't okay with that don't matter, because we haven't got enough money to fight it. Anyway, I was being served my usual dose of nonsense, as you do. And then I moved over to Instagram, and I got served my usual dose of nonsense there. And then I moved over to Facebook, and I got served my usual dose of nonsense there. And by nonsense, I am talking about advertising. And it suddenly made me realize, I don't think advertising works on my generation. Like, at all. And I thought I'd get delve into, you know the who's, the why's, and the what's that is, and what I mean by that. So I'll give you an example. So I don't pay for Amazon Music, I don't pay for Spotify, I don't pay for YouTube Premium. Essentially, I don't pay for any subscription service which I don't see a particular value in, and the way that subscription services combat that is by force-feeding me adverts and limiting the utility I have within an app. For instance, YouTube Music, you can listen to whatever you want. You can listen to all the videos, but there's adverts in between all the different videos, and if you lock your phone, it stops playing the music, which I feel like is a ridiculous uh, thing to lock behind a paywall because it basically just doesn't make me want to use the app at all. It just is, you know, it's not a good free experience, unlike, you know, some other things which have a good free experience, or other things which used to have a good free experience, and no longer do. I'm looking at you, my fitness pal. Amazon Music, you can listen to whatever you want, there is adverts, but you have a limited catalogue. It's not so bad, I think adverts kick in maybe, maybe once every 15 minutes, and it also limits how much you can skip. So, you know, again, it's not that bad, but I'll, get, I'll come back to that. Spotify, just shitloads of adverts in it. Just absolutely shitloads of adverts and you can't play the things you want to play. So what these platforms do is essentially try to annoy you to some escalated layer. Now back to YouTube briefly. YouTube on desktop I use an ad blocker because I'm me and I don't want to be served adverts, which means I never see the adverts on YouTube. I only get the adverts which the YouTubers themselves are selling to me, which I don't do. I mean, I might do one day if someone gives me a subscription, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that, especially not on ones which are with a guest. If anything, it'd just be on these ones because then it'd be like, I'm just selling myself. Well, what else am I going to do? And who's going to sponsor this? I'm not going to get some corporate group, like I was trying to think, I don't know, HelloFresh going to come out of the going and we're like, hey, Graham, you should promote HelloFresh and here's your script because <laughs> that's just not going to happen. I'm going to tell you the truth about it, <laughs> regardless of whatever. You know, Tony's Chocolate might come out over and be like, hey, Graham, we saw the video you did on this. We kind of like that style. You should you should talk about Tony's Chocolate. In which case, I'd just be like, well, I will prompt you to my previous video, Tony's. Um, and that is your advertisement. I'm sorry, but that's just the reality of the world around you. Anywho, what was I saying? So I use YouTube Music and I use Amazon Music um, quite a lot, actually. I, I use them both quite a lot, but... I'm not frustrated by them, and I have no want to buy the premium versions of the services. It doesn't bother me, and I think this is part of my generation and Generation X. We're all kind of in that grouping where we were, we we kind of, I don't know, we're very self-aware of advertising in ways that other generations just maybe aren't. I don't know. The way I was thinking of it was this. I was trying to think of each generation and how they're affected by different advertising. And when I think of the older generations, um, everyone kind of came before Generation X, they're very susceptible to advertising, but they're very susceptible in a very specific way in that they see adverts, 
and they don't necessarily believe the adverts, but they don't have a way to prove it or not prove it. So instead, they look at it and they go, oh, it's an advertisement, I will watch this advertisement, and they'll maybe get annoyed by that advertisement. They'll maybe get frustrated by that advertisement. They maybe even, you know, complain about that advertisement. Or they'll go the other way and they'll be like, I love that advert. You know, they grew up in a time where advertising was almost like an art form. It was something which was being heavily looked at as a way to you know, control the people but also sell products, so they were coming to get more and more inventive. During the 90s, advertisements became this kind of wild west of just absolute garbage. But at the same time, there's some crystal clear moments in it where you're like, oh man, that was a good advert. I watched a clip recently about um, jingles which live re- rent-free in your mind, and I can almost guarantee that, if, at least if you're from the UK, if I say the words, do you feel like chicken tonight, someone will finish that with chicken tonight, chicken tonight and that's how effective a jingle is and that's not really a thing anymore at least not in the uk the, you know jingles have kind of died off i think the closest thing i can think to compare that to is maybe the go compare advert but again that advert was designed to annoy you it was designed to be irritating and for you to react to it so you get annoyed at the go compare man and you would tweet about it and you'd anger it and all that kind of stuff anyway back to what i was saying and then you have the younger generation who are in a new realm of advertising because adverts are doing such a high level attempt at to hide that they're adverts right that's the new that's the new frontier right you're no longer announcing this is a thing this is an advert this is what i'm selling come get this merch buy this thing look at this artwork no longer doing that now it slipped in with everything else. When you're flicking through Instagram, you'll see it because it won't look like an advert. It'll look like the rest of the content that you're consuming in order to hide. And then you have to look for the little line which says sponsored, paid for, promoted, whatever the platform is pushing is their little tag to say, this is an advert. Someone paid for you to see this. That's what they're doing. And kids just, you know, just don't realize it. And it's because, you know, life imitates art, art imitates life. And when it comes to content online, a lot of that stuff is pushed to look like one another. As soon as you start making something which looks in one certain way and that, start, that trend starts to take off, some advertising company comes out knowing because we need to be making more of that, we need to make more of that, and then we can hide behind the veneer that everybody else has built to kind of push that through. Even this, even this format, this is just me rambling in a slightly anarchistic way on a microphone like I'm trapped in a bunker somewhere. Somewhere there's an advert, which is this somewhere there is an advert which is basically this and in reality it's just selling you something it's probably something to do with meal prep or it's probably something to do with uh you know the end of the world and stocking up your rations and all those kinds of things it'll just be a guy with a beard in a bunker being like yeah you know the people did this and they're doing this are you worried are you insecure do you need extra supplies for your bunker then get them here big doug's house of nothing i got on a little tangent there anyway that's what modern advertising is. And kids don't know this because there's no barrier, right? When we grew up, I say we because I just collectively think of you all as the same age as me. I apologize for that. But when we grew up, there was a very clearly defined barrier. There was, oh, there was clear like borders to advertising on television. You were watching television. So you're watching a show. The show would stop. And then adverts would begin. And they might even be, I don't know if they still do this because I haven't got a television. Well, I have a television, but I don't have a regular TV. Um, They used to even be like, we'll return to your program shortly. Would appear on your screen. Or programming is resuming and we'll return to your screen. And now those things are sponsored. I think the classic one is this one for The Simpsons in the UK on Channel 4. It was like, Simpsons, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. And you know there's a very clear body. You know you're about to be advertised to. So your brain can go and it can switch off or switch on, depending on how you feel about being sold things. Some people enjoy it. Some people like to know about the new projects, the new gadgets and all that things. Other people don't. But we had this clear barrier when we grew up. And then the internet came. And suddenly we even were more aware of advertising because advertising took the representation of pop-ups. Pop-ups were everywhere. They were just in your face. They were big, glaring. They were almost like digital flyers because they were that gaudy. You know, there, there was no subtlety. There was no, no one was embedding a video on a website expecting you to watch it. They were just going, oh, hey, pow, here's this thing. Buy this. This is money off. Get this toaster. Buy whatever you want. 
but you can afford it. Don't hurt. You can't afford it. Great. Here's some credit. Get some credit. You can get a credit card. All this kind of stuff. And they were everywhere. And then we invented things like ad blockers. And they realized, huh, we've been a little bit invasive on something which people use for over eight, over eight hours a day. Maybe we should go subtle. Maybe we should go covert. And that's where modern advertising comes from. At least in my view, in my, as a layman's terms, as someone who's never studied marketing at a high capacity level, that's essentially the situation we live in. And I think growing up in that environment made us less susceptible to it. You know, when I think of people around me, when I think of people within my generation, I think of how we react to adverts. And most of the time, we don't, right? We just, we fall and ignore it. And my example is me using something like YouTube Music, where there's an advert every so often. It's just part of the background noise. Now, I couldn't even, I, w- I was sat, I was sat, I was sat in the toilet because, you know, this is where the best thoughts come from. And I was sat in the toilet and I was trying to think to myself, right, if I, if I look through my phone and I go on social media and I think of the stuff I've seen in the last maybe three hours of using my phone, can I remember the single advert which I've seen? And this is a question I have for you guys. Can you remember anything you've been advertised to today? Because I can. I've seen adverts everywhere. I've seen them on my stories. I've seen them in my feed. I've seen them on videos. I've seen them on websites. I've been doing all sorts today on the internet. You wouldn't believe the things I've been doing on the internet. That sounds filthy, don't say that. But I couldn't tell you what's been advertised to me. None of them made a lasting impression in any way, shape, or form. And the only ones which do are the ones where I actually click through. And usually if I click through, I'd remember it. But then if I didn't buy it, and I didn't involve myself in it, it's gone. It just disappears into the vapor of the day. And I think this is almost something which advertising companies aren't even comprehending. They want it to be so covert, and they want it to be so subliminal that you can't even recognize when you're being advertised to. But to that point, because they are so innocuous, who remembers these things? You know? who Who's going to remember when you click past this new product, this new way of doing things? And even the bombardment doesn't work, right? Even the bombardment doesn't make you think, oh yeah, I should buy that thing. In the end, it just makes you think, oh, well, I click through that, and I click through that again. I click through that, and I click through that again. I use, a du- I use Duolingo app on my phone, trying to learn Spanish. Got a 700-day streak, by the way. Still suck at Spanish, just a heads up. Um, and there's an advert every, after every lesson. Advertising me all sorts. And I really couldn't tell you anything I've been advertised to or about. And this may be just a, a, a peculiarity to me, because my memory is not the most powerful thing in the world. It has large blank spots for various reasons through my life. But... That's the thing. I just, I don't remember it. And I don't think it works on a basic level of connecting with human beings, which is good in a way, but also bad in a way. (laughs) Because you could miss something important, right? This is what content's become. This is what all this click-through stuff has become, is... It evaporates, and you you start to ignore advertising. It's almost like fast skimming. You could skim, like let's say, if you skimmed a whole article. I get I get the feeling that if you handed an article to a group of people, some who were over fifty, some who were over thirty, and some who were over eighteen, right, and you said to them, right, this article contains some level of advertising. Can you find the advert? Point out to me, what is the advert? I think it would take, it would probably take the the oldest generation the longest. It would take the youngest generation the shortest amount of time, but they wouldn't necessarily pick the right thing. Whereas the millennial generation, the Gen X generation would read the article and know that the article itself is the advert. And that's, that's why we take so much information we see with such a grain of salt nowadays, because they tried so hard for this. It's almost like a reading class which you're just not taught. This is something maybe they should be teaching in schools, is recognizing 
false and paid for information, right? You're taught to read, you're taught, you're taught learning and education, you're taught understanding language and how to take apart books and read Chaucer and look at mice and men and go, oh, well, this, is, this, this is what the rabbits represent. You know, you're taught all of that, but at the same time, because of the culture we have and the ever-growing culture, especially with things like AI and ChatGP, you were looking at that and saying, okay, well, how does this affect us day to day and what should we be teaching people? We were taught... We would, I mean, I was taught as a kid how to, you know, use cursive as a writing skill. And then I was taught how to read manuals and how to read instructional items and the technical format and layout of documents. That, that was things we were taught because those are things which are going to be useful in your day-to-day -day life. And in some capacity, they were useful. You know, using a washing machine, you couldn't just hype up YouTube and be like this brand washing machine how used you know you couldn't keyword search that you had to you had to understand it on some level and have been shown it at some level by someone who's older than you and I think that that is now the like the economic background of what children need they need to be sat down and shown this is how advertisers use articles and blogs and programs and this is how this will affect your day-to-day -day reading life so that when they go online they are less affected by all of these things. There's a huge problem with, you know, self-esteem, misinformation, and children, because children are so eager to learn, whether they like education or not. They, they want information. They want to know more about the world around them, learn more about the world around them. And they're obviously very volatile because they're growing as human beings. They're organisms which are becoming human beings and consuming everything around them. And they don't have a filter. They don't have a management of that. So it's almost like skills in learning casual, you know, suggestion and casual manipulation become much more important because everything's upgrading itself. It's becoming more nuanced. It's becoming subtler, as most things do, right? That's not just true of advertising. That's true of everything. Most things start off brash, blunt, core and to the point and over time get solar i can relate it back to to art art when it started was big it was bold it was colorful it was beautiful it was mosaics it was renaissance it was all of those things and over time that got drip fed through a little sieve and then the next generation captured it of like oh this is impressionism and this is all the things you want and then the next generation and the cubists and the constructivists and everything like that boiled down to modern art which is so subtle that people look at it and they go is this even art that's the same thing which is exactly happening with language and adverts and adverts i know i wax lyrical about adverts right i get it I know I've done tangent upon tangent of advertising, but I just find it fascinating how we're affected by things. I'm fascinated by who's affected and in what way they're affected and why they're affected and why I can listen to hours and hours and hours and adverts on end and just not even care. You know, I was watching Scream the other night, so I don't have uh, cable in any capacity. I don't have uh, NTL as it's called or, or Virgin Media or anything like that I have what is on my generic TV over here in the US which means I get a lot of adverts which means I'm watching shows so I'm watching Scream and it kept putting an advert maybe every 10 minutes it was about every 10 minutes they would pop an advert up there would be a break there would be you know a gap and it would send me the thing and it showed me the same advert let's be let's be realistic about it it showed me the same adverts I saw for insurance and medication and all the things which they want to sell to you and I watched it, and I just, I didn't care. Oh, you're going to be able to hear a siren in a moment. But I didn't care. It wasn't making me angry. It wasn't making me annoyed. It even stopped at the climax, right? It was the climax of the movie. Everything was going to come to a head. You know, Sid was just about to get stabbed up. The end of the film was coming. We all saw it coming, and then there was an advert break. Did I care? No. Did it raise my heart rate? Not even a blink. Did I sit and watch it? Yeah, kind of, but also not really. I just sat there and was like, yeah, this is a thing. I was still drawing at the time, still chilling out. It was... That's how I react to these things. YouTube music doesn't bother me. I'm running on a treadmill. Amazon just starts to advertise to me. It cuts into their music. It's just there. It's, it's just part of the noise of consuming things in a culture which has valued selling things over the things which actually want to be watched and viewed. Even on YouTube, it's just there. The only reason I block ads on YouTube is because I can, right? 
And that's more time consuming, I think, the YouTube advertising landscape. That's what more annoys me, is the, the, the depth of adverts. I tried using the YouTube app on my TV the other day, and it's basically unusable. I don't know if YouTube knows this, but it's essentially unusable. You can watch a 10 minute video of me showing like eight adverts, and you'll see an advert to begin with before the video, and then during the video, they'll pop up an advert because it'll be monetized. And then a little while later, if it's a 10 minute video, there'll be another advert. Oh, and then there'll be an advert just after you watch. So you've suddenly gone from watching something which you could watch in 10 minutes to watching something which will take you 20 minutes to half an hour because of all the advert breaks. And you're not gonna be able to skip them all because who's gonna go back and forth to the TV to skip it? Nobody. I'm talking like I'm walking up to a TV and pushing buttons like it's the 80s or something, but I digress. That's the only reason I block it on YouTube. If it's inoffensive and doesn't particularly interrupt me, I'm not going to care. My brain won't even register that there was an advert because it'll just block that out. It's focused on the bit which I wanted to consume. It's focused on the little bit which was interesting me and had my attention. The rest of it doesn't have my attention. It's like when you listen to a podcast and they kick in with whatever they're selling, you know, doorbells or food kits or whatever car map they're pushing these days you know it kicks in my brain just switches off it's like a, just a brain switch a light switch in your head which goes oh hey and we're back in we're back in the room come back in and join us and, and enjoy the noise of what you were actually here for i don't know have you seen this change in generations i can't i i, I mean i haven't spoken to young people in a very long time I say young people, you know. Well, I don't know what's considered young anymore. I'm I'm approaching middle age. I may as well make a video about middle aged white men. I probably should make one. Bounce it out a bit, you know. That one got a lot of interaction interesting interaction last time. But who knows? It led me down this ball path that maybe different generations are affected differently by advertising. And that ours is now responsible for teaching the younger generations. And something we should feel responsible is for is teaching them how to deal with that. How to recognize that at a young age so they're not exploited and they're not damaged and sold to and misled. They talked about the dangers of the internet when we were children. They talk about the dangers of the internet now. But they're talking about it in the same vein as when we were children. About not going in chat rooms, not meeting strangers online. They're leaving out the big part, which is not to trust everything you see and not to trust everything you read, which our parents knew because they'd been shown advertising and been hurt by advertising. And we knew because we watched it grow. These new people, they're being born into that situation and think that that's the normal. And it is the normal. But as long as you learn to read it, it can't really hurt you. I don't know if you have to hear there's a child laughing outside. My ideas aren't laughable, child. You're who I'm talking about. I don't know. Have a think about it. Enjoy the advert after this YouTube video if you haven't got ad block on. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.